All right, in the last couple of videos, we got done introducing you to some of these concepts dealing with bullet stabilization and gyroscopic effects. So now we're prepared to take a closer look at static and dynamic stability and how these things affect tractability, which has to do with the projectile's ability uh, for its longitudinal axis to basically follow the bending of the trajectory on its flight path towards the target. Once we understand these things, we will be able to get a good handle on Magnus effect and actually understand what's going on so that we can learn to correct for things like spin drift. And also, we'll talk about other effects that Magnus effect can have, particularly with wind. So, let us take a look here at some of these terms. First of all, let's uh, revisit static stability real quick. Static stability, as we discussed before, is basically talking about the gyroscopic stability. When a bullet exits the muzzle, the spinning mass will produce a centrifugal force pulling outwards in all directions from its uh, spin axis, which will act to gyroscopically stabilize that bullet in flight, which is necessary to keep it from overturning because its center of gravity is located behind the center of pressure. So that rigid Spin axis is what keeps that thing from uh, flipping over, basically. The, the higher the rigidity, the faster it's spinning, the greater the, the static stability that bullet will have. And on the last video there, we did start to introduce you to the idea that too much static stability can cause overstabilization, which may cause a loss in tractability later on. Okay, so the reality is that any rifle bullet you're going to select is going to have some degree of imperfection to it. So you're not ever going to find any bullet that's perfectly stable, statically speaking. And so the result of that is you are going to have some degree of yaw, uh, either caused by runout or by inconcentricities within the bullet structure, uh, jacket thickness differences, things like that can throw up the balance of that bullet. So when that bullet exits the muzzle, immediately it's going to encounter some yaw. And if you follow the nose of the bullet as it's spinning, we, we talked about before how uh, bullets are spinning at about 200,000 plus RPMs, depending on your twist and muzzle velocity. They're spinning very fast. But if you were to slow it down and track the direction that that nose is pointing off of its axis, it'll kind of make uh, an interesting pattern here. And you'll see how the yaw kind of spirals around and uh, it'll uh, do little circle patterns as it's going around the X and Y axis here as we're looking at on this chart. And after a certain point, the yaw will begin to be dampened out by aerodynamic effects. Some guys talk about weather veining and some of these things like this. Basically, you have uh, a lot of pressure on the along the sides of the ogive of that uh, the shape of the bullet on the front there, and that. Unless there's too much uh, angle initially, which can actually act to destabilize that bullet, but uh, the aerodynamic effects will initially begin to dampen out that yaw as it's uh, spinning. And the farther out it goes, the more stable it will actually become. Uh, sometimes it won't be completely stabilized from its static imbalances until you get out a couple hundred meters. And once the yaw of that bullet decreases to the point to where it's considered damped out, that bullet is then considered to be dynamically stabilized, which basically means a real quick definition of that again, in case you forgot from the last videos, your, the nose of your bullet is pointing straight on to the direction it's flying. So dynamic stability is really talking about aerodynamic stability. Uh, once that thing gets crooked from the direction it's flying, it is no longer aerodynamically stable. So there are ways to calculate the dynamic stability factor. However, there are so many different things that happen when you get into mixing gyroscopic forces in with the uh, airflow dynamics that it becomes quite a complicated science. And uh, it's very difficult to mathematically pin down a, a dynamic stability factor and quantify that as far as numbers go. And, uh, it varies as your velocity changes and as your flow fields change and the exact shape of your bullet and all kinds of numerous different variables. 
that uh, haven't even been entered into the equation can really throw it off. So there's only a certain degree of certainty that can be acquired from looking at dynamic stability factors. But just to get a basic idea of what we're dealing with here, here's a dynamic stability condition mathematically expressed. And you can see we're dealing with drag coefficients, lift coefficient derivatives, uh, Magnus moment coefficient derivatives, pitch damping uh, moment derivative, gyroscopic stability factor, and dynamic stability factor. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. You basically have five different aerodynamic coefficients going on, which are all kind of difficult to determine. So this factor can be really, really difficult to actually calculate and actually get it to represent what's really happening as it varies, like we said before, with bullet velocity at any given second. And also a lot of these things change dramatically as you approach the transonic zone. And you can basically take all this and throw it out the window because even now with all the Doppler radar measurements they've been doing and all the math they've been working on, uh, it's basically impossible to express mathematically what a bullet's going to do when it goes through the transonic zone if it loses its dynamic stability to where it starts to go into some kind of tumble. After that point, it's uh, basically beyond all hope, and that's your maximum effective range once you approach a transonic zone on most projectiles. And we will talk about balanced flight technology uh, being employed in the 408 Shytac M200 weapon system just a little bit to kind of give you an idea of why that particular setup was designed the way it was and uh, what they got going on there. So that'll be an interesting one too. But basically that's your dynamically uh, stable condition expressed mathematically. There are a few terms here we're going to want to familiarize ourselves with again before we get into too much detail on tractability and uh, Magnus effect. And we're going to talk about the thing called yaw of repose. This is also known by a lot of guys as equilibrium yaw. And it sounds scary and it's kind of hard to, if you look up the actual definition of these things, uh, it can be confusing if you're not familiar with the language. But in a nutshell, to try to make it real simple, yaw of repose or equilibrium yaw is basically the angle between the projectile's longitudinal axis, you know, where it's rotating the center line of the bullet and the direction of the velocity of the center of gravity. Now, when a bullet is uh, flying through its trajectory path, the center of gravity is actually going to be the center of where that bullet's uh, motion is, okay? So if you uh, would draw out the trajectory line, that's going to be followed by your center of gravity, okay? And the axis of rotation can be pointing in a different direction from the line of trajectory. If that's the case, that angle difference between the uh, line of uh, motion and the line of which direction the bullet's actually pointing is your yaw of repose. And you can see it illustrated here. We'll talk about this in a little bit more detail when we get into Magnus effect. But uh, after a certain amount, depending on which direction your spin is going, it will experience Magnus effect. It'll torque it off a little bit, It'll, particularly during the descending leg of your trajectory. And the yaw of repose is usually going to have a vertical and a horizontal component to it as far as your angle is concerned. The angle of attack is uh, kind of the same thing as the angle between the direction of travel and the axis of the bullet. Uh, so basically that's talking about what, you know, how, how far uh, your nose is tilted up. Okay, tractability factor. This is going to be important to understand before we get into Magnus effect. Tractability factor is basically, like we mentioned before, the bullet's ability to keep its nose pointed in the direction that it's going throughout the curve of the trajectory. If your bullet was tracking perfectly, that would mean that it's flying nose on as it's going up the ascending leg. It'll flatten out at the max ordinate and it'll go nose down, pointing in the same direction of the motion of the bullet on its descending leg. So if it was uh, tracking perfectly, it would hit straight on with whatever angle it was flying. The nose would always be straight on. However, like we discussed in the videos before, the gyroscopic stability at, at those uh, during that descending leg can stiffen up that bullet's spin axis to the point to where it's going to remain pointing in the same direction as when it exited the barrel or possibly even a little more nose up. So that's what we're talking about. Tract tractability is just measuring how well the nose of that bullet's basically staying on track with its flight path. 
And you can see it represented mathematically here again. And one thing you might pick out if you uh, were to study this in detail is that the uh, tractability factor is basically proportional to the inverse of the gyroscopic stability factor. So the more gyroscopic stability you have, the uh, less tractability it's going to have. It's going to be proportional to the inverse of that. So uh, gyroscopic stability is good for keeping it stable at a certain point, but during the descending leg, especially if you have a real high angle shot at a real long distance where your descending leg is a lot different than your uh, angle of departure, uh, gyroscopic stability is going to work against you. It's going to reduce your tractability to the same degree which it was helping you initially, <laughs> simply speaking. So that's something that is only really cons we got to be concerned with for extreme long range shooting. Again, if we're talking about normal shooting circumstances, you know, zero to 500 meters, zero to 800 meters, even those are relatively flat trajectories to where this is not going to be a big problem. But when you're approaching your maximum range on your bullet, usually you're talking about a pretty steep descending leg on the trajectory and you're going to have some radical angles enough to uh, pro probably cause some problems. Your tractability is going to be uh, an issue that you're going to want to be familiar with, especially once you start approaching your max range because once the nose of your bullet is pointing in a different direction than it's flying, it's going to be subjected to a whole new dilemma atmosphere-wise. There's going to be air rubbing on it from different angles. It's going to push it in different directions. And that's something you're going to have to understand and be able to correct for. So this is just uh, building the base for understanding basically spin drift and Magnus effect. Cool. So that wasn't too painful, I hope. If it was, just watch it again and watch it again. And you can read about this. Uh, there's various different sources. A guy could probably read about this. Sierra, the, the maker of those bullets, has some pretty good uh, external ballistics papers and uh, things you can read online. Also, Hornady has some good stuff you can read. The Army Research Laboratories documents, those things will make you want to die if you're not really into the math stuff. And uh, they're pretty dry, too. You can read the naval gunnery texts, you know, what they're talking about, the, the ships shooting the big uh, shells at each other and stuff. There's a lot of different places that have this pretty well figured out. But hopefully this video is kind of simplifying it to where a guy can actually understand it. So now on the next video, we're going to start talking about Magnus Effect and its role concerning bullet stability and also spin drift. So it's starting to get pretty exciting here. Hopefully you guys are liking it. All right, I'll catch you later. All right, let's get out of here.